My name is Alyssa, and I'm a pediatric physical therapist at LifeScape. This is the first of three videos where we are going to be discussing infant positioning devices, the good, the bad, and the alternatives. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at positioning devices for laying. Take a stroll down the baby aisle at a store and you'll easily become overwhelmed with all the latest and greatest bouncy seats, rockers, swings, and baby loungers available. Where do you even begin to make the best decision for you and your baby? Navigating the world of parenting and positioning devices can be tricky at times, so I'm here to share my experience as both a mom and a PT. These positioning devices all offer comfortable and soothing places to put your infant. Babies who typically use these devices are not able to sit on their own yet and might still be working on head control. They work great when you need a safe, supervised place to put your little one when you need to cook a meal, use the bathroom, or just take a minute for yourself. To little babes, these are sometimes the next best thing to being held in your arms. However, these positioning devices restrict an infant's ability to move freely and explore their environment. Early mobility is crucial to the development of their senses. If babies don't get the movement they need, it can impact their ability to meet their developmental milestones. Also, because these devices are so soothing, infants will often fall asleep in them. And who wants to move a sleeping baby and risk waking them up? Not this mama. When babies sleep in these reclined devices, their head will often tilt to one side, which can lead to tight neck muscles and a flat spot on their head. If you don't have any of these positioning devices, don't feel the need to go buy them. Here are some alternatives. Place your baby on a blanket or activity mat on the floor with toys or a mirror to encourage looking in all directions and let them explore. The hanging toys on activity mats are great for reaching and kicking. Don't forget that our children are three-dimensional and benefit from being placed on their sides, tummy, and back. Infant carriers and slings are another safe, hands-free alternative and promote infant bonding. Just make sure you follow the guidelines for proper hip positioning in the carriers and slings. If you have any of the devices we discussed today, here are some recommendations that will help minimize the negative effects while allowing both you and your infant to enjoy the positive aspects. For all positioning devices combined, limit your baby's use to no more than 15 to 20 minutes at a time, two to three times a day, or take them out as soon as they start to get tired. After your infant spends time in a positioning device, give them plenty of time on the floor to play and work on their motor skills. Also, remember that time spent in car seats and strollers count toward time spent in a positioning device. Keep in mind these devices aren't one size fits all. To prevent concerns like neck tightness or a preference to look in only one direction, use small rolled up blankets or towels to hold your baby's head in midline and allow for improved positioning. Remember to follow safe sleep guidelines by placing your infant on a flat surface, not in a positioning device. If you have questions about safe sleep recommendations, talk to your pediatrician. If you have any questions about use of a positioning device, or if you are concerned about your infant's development, including milestones, tight neck muscles, preference to look in one direction, or a flat spot on their head, just give us a call. Remember, this is just video one of three in our series about infant positioning devices. So if you find yourself looking for advice on sitting and moving devices, be sure to check out our next video. Lifescape Therapy is always here to support you with tools and information to make the best decisions for your little one.